Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the FBU's first Facebook Live. Uh, first of all, can you all hear me? Going from one of our little hiccups through the election campaign, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll be doing more of these into the future, um, and, and hopefully you guys get on board with that, and uh, please let us know. So look, first of all, um, I'm going to give a bit of a State of the Union, uh, what's been happening um, I suppose over the last few months uh, since the last election. And just on the last election, I'd really like to thank everybody that participated. We had over 2,100 members vote uh, that wanted to have a say in the democracy in this union. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, 24 candidate forums, uh, four or five Facebook lives with over a thousand people watching each one of those. Um, dozens and dozens of station visits. Um, and, and I think the, uh, the feedback out of all of that was really, really positive. And I thank you for all, you know, for participating in that. And for everyone that stuck their hand up to, um, you know, to, to, to run for this great union that we do have. Uh, now, look, another couple of thank yous. I'd like to thank everyone for the, uh, the comments about my, uh, my Kyle Sandalene's beard that I'm running here. Uh, my kids think I'm Santa at the moment, but obviously we're a bit far off from that. Uh, it will be coming off. In a, uh, a few weeks, I'll be heading back one of the trucks. So if anyone's got any suggestions about where I should go, I'm sort of looking mid to late August, sort of September. Oh, thank you. There I am. Uh, unfortunately not. Um, so yeah, if you've got any ideas on, on where you think it'd be a good place for me to come out and, and talk to a whole bunch of people with, with good ideas, let me know. Um, send me a, an email and, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'd also like to congratulate all the newly elected officials. Um, we had a, 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 new, a great new influx of uh, new people into the union. I think it's over nine new officials, which was awesome. Some really, really good people um, who are now, you know, getting their legs under the table, so to speak, and, and starting to do some really good things. So, you know, get a hold of your state committee official and uh, give them your ideas and, and obviously show them your support. Uh, yep, oh, Comrade President Nan is on board. Hello, how, how's things, Mick, down there in Illawarra? Um, so yeah, like I said, there's a bit of a, a, a general state of the union tonight. Uh, there's lots of things on, as always. Um, as you can see, SITREP is um, in a state of, I suppose, uh, from uh, lots of different issues to lots of different disputes that we're having at the moment. Um, just to suppose as ground rules around these Facebook lives, I mean, because it was a bit different to my election campaign. I won't really be talking about, you know, the strategies and tactics um, or possibly even uh, specific questions about current issues. Obviously, you know, hello, uh, you know, management and the government are watching this. So, we, you know, we're not going to be giving that away. So, look, if, if I ignore your question, then please don't be upset, but you can understand why we might want to keep things, you know, the cards close to our chest, so to speak. Um, now, in saying that, uh, if you do want to get that question answered, contact your state committee official, send an email into the office, and we'll do our best to answer that for you. Um, you know, there's uh, plenty of uh, um, uh, officials out there, obviously one for each sub-branch, but what you need to be doing is asking them, um, holding sub-branch meetings, um, asking them to come and just visit your station. I'll get along to those if I can as well. Uh, but look, happy to take questions here as well. So, you know, keep them general if you can. Um, and, you know, almost looking forward to some of those. Um, but look, I will go through a couple of things that are going on. So, uh, look, on my things that I want to have a quick chat about tonight is uh, comms. And there's two parts of that. So we've got our union comms and how, we, how the union communicates internally and externally. And then obviously, fire brigade comms, which obviously with the Kilty Review and um, you know the, the, the recommendations coming out of that, so I'll have a quick chat about that. Uh, the rule changes that are proposed at the moment, I'll have a very, very quick chat about that. Uh, the wonderful plus, 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 minus, plus plan. Uh, and certainly that we'll be having a quick chat about the regs and hopefully we can take some free questions at the end. Um, so look, union comms, very briefly. Anyone that watched the, the, the last election uh, would have seen probably a different style campaign, um, sort of from myself, uh, where part of that was really about trying a whole bunch of different things sort of in that election space, where you've, I suppose you've got a bit more flexibility to do certain things, to see whether they you know, 
sink or swim. Um, and now I'm obviously trying to have a look about how they come across into our organisation, uh, uh, the union. Um, we did um, about a lot of members asking me what's happening with Facebook, uh, what's happening with our website, our comms generally. Um, I've got a audit being done at the moment of how we communicate externally, uh, internally, um, through every you know, avenue that we can with our media. Uh, hopefully we'll get a report back on that in, in a month or so. Um, I imagine it'll come back saying we're doing things good, bad, or we're not doing things at all, and probably everywhere in between. So look, if you've got ideas, please send them in to us, or we'll have a chat to your, your state committee official, and uh, you know we'll, we'll take those ideas on board. Um, I suppose moving forward, um, you know, where we're going with our comms is obviously we want to be more engaged with the members. Um, you know, it came across loud and clear certainly over the last 18 months, uh, but certainly through that period where we were getting out and speaking to a lot of members is that you know everyone wants to be heard, everyone wants to be involved, and, and how do we do that? So obviously there's two parts of that. There's obviously this organising model, uh, and sorry, this communications model that we're, that we're moving towards uh, with Facebook Lives. Um, if you're not getting SITREP, uh, SITREP email to you at the moment, please update your details. Um, one of those campaigns, that it was one of the campaigns we ran through the election, over 600 members changed their details. That was awesome, that's a 10th of our membership. Um, and, then, and of those 600, we actually changed 400 details. So that was really awesome. That means 400 people actually got to vote that may not have. So that's really good. So if you're one of those people that didn't get a ballot paper, uh, didn't get a membership card um, in the last year, we don't have your address. So you know, please log on to our website, change your details, and you'll start receiving our messages. Look, I suppose moving on to the Kilty review, and I'm only gonna briefly mention that because it, it, it is a live issue. Um, hopefully you would have seen some of the media did on that. It was, it was quite brief, unfortunately. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, hopefully you'll be seeing all the messages uh, to the members that I've put out through SITREP um, uh, and, and also our feedback on the recommendations of the Kilty review, uh, review. If you haven't seen that, that's in the last couple of SITREPs. Please check that out. Um, I also popped out and saw uh, as many of the comms members uh, and shifts that I could. Um, I thought that was, you know, for, for the, I suppose, the, uh, the unfair um, assessment that they copped, I think they were, they were doing really, really well out there. Um, I was lucky enough to meet the, the crew that was actually on shift uh, during the task for fire. Um, and I, look, I, I, I know I've said this all to you, Dan, but I say this to you now, uh, not just myself, but I think every member in this union is absolutely proud of what you did that day. And I cannot stress that enough. Um, I said, uh, we know how important our comms members are uh, to fire and obviously to, to unions. You, we know exactly how you, you, know, you look after us, you resource us, um, you, you do as much as you can uh, to, to make sure you know, we're looked after and you're sending us in the right direction uh, and to the right addresses. So absolutely no criticism should have been leveled at you guys uh, and, and more probably follow on that in, in the coming months. Um, look, I suppose, um, the other parts on that, I suppose, there's, there's you know, I, I think members really need to get on board and understand what's happening with this dispute. Um, you know, I suppose there's, 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 no, there's no real reason, there's no goal to get rid of firefighters out of comms. Now, if you want the best comm centre, you don't get firefighters out of them. You don't put civilians in them. Now, we all know this. The only reason you put civilians in them is if you want to hide what's going on, and that's what the union has been doing, has been exposing what's been going on, and I imagine that's exactly what uh, is going on here. They're trying to shuffle this away, hide it over into a corner, um, and we certainly won't be, uh, we certainly won't be uh, taking that um, lightly. So look, like I said, I won't be, uh, I won't be um, you know, speaking too much to that, but look, those comms members out there, we've got your back. Um, and uh, look, keep in touch with your delegates. Uh, they're in con constant contact with, uh, with me. Um, it'll be an interesting next eight months. Uh, as you'll hear throughout this uh, uh, Facebook Live, uh, we're eight months out from a state election um, and we've got a minister that's uh, not running. So 
we'll, uh, it'll be a very interesting eight months to see how, how hard they want to push us on comms. Uh, like I said, I suppose we, we, uh, through my platform uh, for election, rule changes were part of that. Um, there was certainly a lot of feedback about how members can uh, bring ideas to state committee, um, uh, how they engage with their union, how they vote, and certainly the rule amendments that I put out in SITREP oh, nearly two months ago now, um, I hope reflect that. Uh, so I went out to, went to state committee to have a look at and then went out to the membership through SITREP. Uh, we got some feedback from state committee, uh, from a few members. We've now got a, a, a version two, which is up on our union's forum. So log into there and see version two. And, and the, I suppose where we're heading with that organizing model is a station-based system, a grassroots system, where stations can vote uh, on issues, either in, a, a, in our general meetings or just on an issue that you think is important that you would like progressed through the sub-branch and, and up to state committee. So look, have a look at those rule changes. Um, rule changes aren't generally done uh, very regularly, so they are quite important. There's a, there's a whole bunch of admin cleanups in there and some, if I'm gonna be honest, some typos as well that obviously need clearing up. But that'll be going to state committee next week uh, to be approved, to go out to the membership for a further 28 days. Um, and then state committee will then sign off on those to then go out for another 14 days for the membership to then have another look. So if, you've, uh, if you haven't had a look at them, please do. And if you've got any feedback, please send it in. Um, oh, look, and just on that as well, there's two things else going on, which I'll just mention as a, as a side note. Um, state committee have been asked, uh, last state committee, uh, to talk to the members about the 2020 award. Um, so they've got uh, two months to get out, speak to members about ideas, um, their thoughts about what we should be talking about or, or, or what we can fix or what would be a good idea going forward uh, for the 2020 award negotiations. Um, look, we obviously can't officially start negotiating with the department for a long time, but certainly if we can start getting ideas out of the membership up front, that'd be fantastic. We can, you know, pull them apart, see what works. Um, so look, if, if you want to have those ideas and if you want to talk about the rule amendments, have a chat to your sub-branch secretary, call for a sub-branch meeting, and that can be all discussed there. And, you know, can then obviously then come to state committee. So please get out there and do that. Um, Look, I'll take a couple of questions and then I'll move on to the plus plus plan. So let me just pull up. So let's see, for 90 people watching, everyone's being extremely polite. Who have we got? Let me see, there's one here and I'm sorry, my, 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 my iPad's a little bit slow, so you'll you, and I'll, if we can't have fire raising comms, does that mean we shouldn't have RFF, RFS members too? Hello, Joel. Joel's down, um, Joel's down south, Albury or Wagga from memory. How's things, mate? Um, look, good question. Um, um, but you know what, look, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm not going to concede the point that we won't have fire raising comms. You know, the community deserves better. You know, we deserve better, you know, and, and this government needs to be held account. You know, we can't just keep saying, well, that's the better way to go, that's the cheaper way to go, and we're gonna concede on that. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not the campaign that I run. We're gonna be sitting here, we're gonna hold the line, and we're gonna do the best for ourselves as a union, and we're gonna do the best for this community, because generally, those two things run in parallel. So, as for RFS members, look, they are, funnily enough, some of those are in the same boat. They've got radio operators over there in RFS headquarters that are wondering whether those guys are going to have it and girls are going to have a job uh, when this comes in. So you know what? I somewhat feel for them, but obviously we've got a lot more to lose. We've got uh, close to 80 odd members in comms um, and we certainly won't be turning our back on them. Oh. All right, well, you guys have been way too polite on, on there and not asking too many questions. And that's, you know, that's not a, uh, a precursor to start going crazy there. Uh, but look, how about we chat about the plus plan? Um, we do, uh, and if you see down the bottom there, we've, we've got a few pluses down there because the FEU is plus, plus, plus. Um, 
Look, there's been a lot of feedback about the PLUS plan, and there's probably even been a, bit, a little bit of criticism of the union about the PLUS plan, but look, let me explain, I suppose, our view on where that is at. Now, we broadly, uh, we broadly accept that firefighters and Fire Rescue New South Wales should be promoting what we do. Now, that's a, I think everyone agrees with that. Um, but I, I don't think it's, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to promote things that, um, while the one, aren't agreed with the workforce, and two, probably um, are not necessarily safe for us, such as the counter-terrorism stuff. So, look, you know, I'd be 100% I'd be behind this if there was a goal, if the department had decided to, um, you know, they, they were sick of journos who were, you know, confusing professional firefighters with, you know, uh, volunteers from the CFA like we see regularly. You know, I, I'd be on board with this if the department was talking about the PLUS plan is about opening up more, more stations, more retained stations, more permanent stations, uh, you know, putting in more aerials, more rescue, more hazmat. That's the plus that I think the department should be talking about. But unfortunately, you know, at the moment, you know, we're not, you know, we're, and we've heard this argument for years, certainly out of, the, out of the previous commissioner, where, you know, build it and we'll get paid. Well, we've seen before that that doesn't occur. You know, we've seen before that putting ourselves out there and saying, well, look, how good are we? We'll take on all this work and, and, and you know, the money will come pouring into the coffers doesn't necessarily work. So I don't feel like we should be going down that track. You know, the ACT, you know, fire union down there took on it, took on Amicola, didn't get paid for it. You know, there's there's uh, you know examples across the public service where you take on good work and you don't get paid for it. So, you know, the, the current wages cap says that if you take on work, you're not going to get paid for it. So, you know, we need to be clear about what you know the messaging that I think that is occurring with this, and that is, you know, I think. You know, I suppose there's a sense of, well, look, we need to stay relevant or, or uh, up to date. Look, and I agree with all those things to a point, to a point. We're not going to less fires. We're not going to more jobs. We're not turning out less. You know, the New South Wales population is absolutely exploding and it has exploded over the last 10 years. This government has not put on, hasn't opened a new fire station, and they have a track record of not opening fire stations when they're in government. Now, we are now actually doing more with less. Now, I don't agree with that. We should be always doing more with more. We should be opening more stations. Western Sydney is exploding. Regional areas are exploding. And we need to keep up with that to provide you know, the, uh, the community with a good response and also, and also good, hardworking jobs. So, um, like I said, I don't believe in doing more with less. I don't think it's good enough for our community. And funnily enough, I don't think it's good, uh, good for us as unionists. Um, look, I'll, um, uh, sorry, I'm just writing through some of the comments here. Hello, Jeff. Uh, Jeff's one of our hardworking uh, comms delegates who I've been on the phone to. Hello, Jeff. Um, yes, uh, so where are we at, I suppose, with the Kilty? Um, as Jeff's just pointed out, um, we've listed the, um, the, uh, in the IRC um, uh, on the recommendations that you know, we lose 100 jobs in comms. You know, the employer hasn't consulted with us on this. Um, you know, funnily enough, you don't just get to come out and say, we'll civilianise comms and you know, the union doesn't get to say on this. So we'll be in there next Thursday um, and I'll, I'll hopefully I'll be able to update um, everyone on that. Uh, when we come out of there. Um, quickly moving on to the Rex. <laughs> Thank you for that comment, comrade, about uh, the beard making me look wiser. <laughs> uh, now the Rex, Rex Thrill for a Toast. Now you would have seen it in Sid Rep, you may have heard about it over the last four years. It is a cracking event, it is. And if you don't know about it, look, let me give you the very, very simple rundown. It is the union's get together, the yearly get together that we hold in July. Um, it costs you $45. Uh, it's at 12 o'clock. The last, well, all four events so far have been held at Dalton House, which is opposite Hyde Park. Uh, it's four hours of eating, uh, drinking, uh, very, very light on speeches. Me and Mick don't necessarily like uh, 
uh, the speeching, so we won't be doing that. It'll be keeping that very, very brief. But it is a great time to catch up with people, you know, fireys that you haven't seen for ages, that you see all the time, uh, the ones you like having a laugh with, the ones you like getting together with. So, you know, the union subsidises about half of um, the whole, uh, whole event. So get along to that. It is next Tuesday. Uh, there should be a link, I think, going up on the screen. And if not, yep, there it is. Um, if you can't find that, go to our website. It's on our banner. Click there and go through. Now, if you have retired in the last uh, financial year and you had 10 years service, pay for a ticket and we'll refund you when you turn up so you get to come for free. Um, now, that is the financial year. For those uh, members that have retired in the last couple of weeks, let me know and we'll probably be able to sort you that. If not, you get a freebie next year. So, um, look, a bit of a shout out to uh, a bit of a stalwart out in the West. Uh, Phil Host, I think, finished his last shift, uh, I think this morning, 36 odd years in the job. Um, I'll be at his send off, which I believe is in a couple of weeks time. So look, well done, Hosty, um, great effort. Um, so yes, look, the Rex, get on board. I think we've only got a few tickets, uh, 15, 20 odd to, to go. So get on board with that now, if you have been holding out on that. So I'll just quickly, yes, so there's a few people that joined us, um, and so I'll just quickly go back uh, to some of the ground rules about um, what we're going to do tonight. Uh, I will skip some of the questions. Oh, thanks guys, see you there. Um, I will be skipping some of the questions. I'm, you know, I'm not going to use these Facebook Lives to talk tactics and strategy. Um, obviously, you know, the government and, and the management will get to view these things, so I'm not going to be putting that out through the open airways. But... Paulie Cameron, thank you, George Clooney's brother. Uh, but seriously, if you do want those answers, get in contact with your official, and if they don't have the answer, they'll get in contact with me, with me and, we'll, and we'll do it that way. So, um, yeah, so if we ignore your question, look, apologies. Uh, where are we? So, sorry, just going back. Geez, everyone's gone very, very quiet. Uh, so Scotty Davison's got a question here um, about early access deliver, uh, defibrillator. Um, or what is the union doing about early access defibrillator? Well, look, it, I mean, this is the plus being Scott, but I mean, I suppose there's two parts to this. Um, go back five years, <laughs> go back five years and, uh, or over six years now, and the union took a position on uh, MFR um, is early access to uh, defibrillator MFR? I think, you know, I we'll be leaving that up to the members and certainly state committee will be getting a briefing on that next Thursday um, from management about what the early access defibrillator program is. So what are we doing about it? At the moment, we haven't had a proposal put to us by the department. Um, you know, certainly, so what I can say to you is there's no proposal. Uh, so certainly there's no money on the table. Uh, we haven't seen any training on the table and we haven't seen any of the support service that are required um, you know, for that work, which was the three pillars of, of what our position as a membership, uh, that the membership took back in 2011. Don't shoot me uh, if I've got that wrong. So those were the three things that the membership decided were important about taking on medical work, and, and that's where we are. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, so there's one here, I think from Chris McNeil. Um, I'm sorry, my Facebook's going down, so I'm reading the screen as well at the moment, comrades. Give me a sec. Uh, and it's about, um, I think, FBU members working in comms. Look, we have... Oh, okay, sorry, it's a bit different to that. I'll just bring it up. Uh, okay, and I'm losing, who needs an MBN when you lose internet? Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. Leighton, the unit is pushing so far. Da, da, da. Do we have the support of the RFS members who man their comms centre? Good question, Mick Chris, sorry about that. Uh, look, I haven't spoken to them. Um, 
there, there, are a, there are a couple of our members that do work over there uh, as a secondary employment. I've had a word to those guys. I, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to push it either way, but I think they really need to rethink what they're doing there. And you know, but um, to be honest, they're clerks or clerks. They work under a different award. Uh, they get paid a whole lot less uh, than our operators do, and uh, they, they're operated under a different union. So. Uh, their union hasn't reached out to us, nor have those members, but look, I'd be more than happy to have a chat to them if they want to, um, you know, reach out to us and, and, you know, have a chat to them about their issues. Yep. So, look, yeah, send in some more questions. Uh, we'll be, probably keep going for another 15 minutes. Um, uh, let us know, you know, what your thoughts on. Hello, Prof, how's things? How's heart going? Look, um, I suppose another issue, current issue that's going on at the moment, certainly in the media, is foam. Um, and I won't talk about this too much, but obviously the union's taking um, a very, very close look on where the department and the government uh, are sitting on this issue. Uh, we'll be rep reporting more on this in the next sit rep. Um, but look, historically on this, you know, the union took a position back in 2007 that, um, you know, uh, uh, that we were going to ban AFFF. Um, it, 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 was a, it, was a, it was the right move at the time uh, by, the, by the state uh, committee back then and, and certainly, you know, it's probably, you know, saved a whole bunch of problems for a whole bunch of fireys. But um, we'll be progressing, um, you know, that issue with the department uh, moving forward. Uh, so keep an eye, an eye out for uh, the sit reps that we do on that. And, and look, you know, if you, were, if you search for foam, uh, on our website, there'll be you know tons and tons of information come up and, and some of that history. So, so we've got a question about that from um, where's presumptive legislation up to? Look, uh, if you if you saw um, oh, sort of late last year, middle of last year, uh, the shadow uh, emergency services minister Guy Zangari get up in parliament uh, in a private member's speech saying he would bring presumptive legislation into the parliament uh, that has been progressing well. Um, we're, we've been developing that bill and hopefully, you know, and I mean very shortly, that will, um, you know, enter parliament and hopefully get the support of all parties in parliament, uh, that certainly the government, the crossbench and, and the opposition. Um, but uh, yeah, at, at this moment, it, it's sitting there getting drafted, making sure it does exactly what uh, we, we think it needs to do. And, uh, and then Labor will be introducing that uh, very shortly. So, um, like I said, I suppose uh, for those new people that have just tuned in, while we're not talking about everything and all the tactics, we're not gonna be using Facebook Lives for that. We're not gonna broadcast um, you know, uh, specific tactics or strategies or, or on current issues. Obviously you can understand why. Uh, but certainly go to your state committee official if you do have an issue. Um, one of the things I suppose um, our, our annual rule amendments and certainly our new communications plan is looking at, at, at addressing is how we fix the things that I suppose members have issues with uh, and how they, bring that to, uh, how they bring that to the committee and how they bring about change uh, within the union. So, you know, if there's something that you don't like, if there's something that you've got a better idea for, and, and that's the big part of this job, um, that's certainly the, what the new state, uh, state committee officials are learning, is that everyone knows what they don't want, um, but certainly you need to have the solution going forward about how to fix that. So that's one of the things that I think we really need to start thinking about as a membership, is how do we, how do we fix these systems? How do, the, how do all the competing issues go into one and then go forward and work as well as it can? Um, I think it's happened reasonably well, I suppose, in, into the past. But like with everything, you know, you keep fixing things, keep modifying things, where you see things, you know, dropping off the table, so to speak. You just put them back up and we build the walls and we keep going. So over the next 18 months, uh, and certainly over the next couple of months, um, get a hold of your state committee official, tell them stuff about the new award that you would like to see um, changed. But don't just tell them you want something changed. Tell them your idea and, 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 and whether we can progress that or not, and you know we, we'll pull that apart. So, um, hello Andrew Tanzan out there at Bathurst. Um, yeah, cheers, mate. Um, we'll, we'll see how go, how this goes. Um, we'll pull apart the stats and see if everyone logs in. 
Um, but yeah, look, hopefully we'll do these going forward. But like I was just saying, you know, we know what we don't want, but we also got to realise we got to come up with solutions. So, um, you know, get, like I was saying, get a hold of your sub branch secretary, um, jump on the unions forum, throw an idea out there and say, look, how about this? Where can we go with this? What can we do with it? Um, and I don't think any idea is a bad idea. Um, you know, there are some ideas that won't work, but they're never bad ideas. Uh, question from Sammy Wall. Hi Sam, how's things? How's the beaches? Is the union satisfied with the number of SOs and LSOs called for? Oh look Sam, I'll have to pull apart the stats on, on how many LSOs have been called for and how many SOs and LFs have been called for. Obviously that whole leading rank uh, um, system was going to take four to five years to roll out. Um, we're only in I think year four at the moment. So that's still got another year to go. Um, I think we're getting there. I think the department after, you know, some pushing from us uh, at the end of last year, certainly over the middle of, middle of last year, we gave them a hurry up and said, look, where are the LFs, where are the LSOs? And I think we're seeing more and more jobs coming through now. Um, so look, I mean, are we happy with that? Look, you know, I'd, I'd love every fire to be an SO, but you know, obviously we can't say that. Uh, that that's obviously not practical, but you know, are we getting, uh, I suppose, are we moving in the right direction? I think we are. Um, our local, our, our regular TRC meetings um, that our, our officials go to, uh, they get updates on that. And, and from what I can see, it's moving in the right direction. But you know what, Sam, I'll, I'll get an update from the TRC uh, next month and I'll, and I'll give you a call. Uh, any other questions out there? We've got a whole bunch. Hello, Michelle Myers, how's things? Uh, comrade from the uh, comrade from the MUA. Uh, uh, I'm just having a. L uh, but hello, Prof. Thanks for asking. Log heart is like. Uh, there we go. Sorry, hard is like the rest of op support. Loads of vacant positions, overworked and understaffed. Look, it's almost like there's a wages cap, Prof. Um, look, and I don't say that flippantly. There, there are some issues in op support, um, you know, which have a whole bunch of different problems, I suppose. I mean, Alexandria at the moment, um, although, you know, now with uh, Erskine Park opening up, um, you know, I was talking to some of the sections down there. They've had more applicants uh, than they've ever seen before. That's a good positive step. I think a lot of people were waiting um, you know, for, for that gap between, you know, uh, ad and, and mo that movement to Erskine Park to, to close a little bit. So we're actually seeing a lot of people applying for the, the I suppose, what will be the new Erskine Park jobs. Um, but look, there, there are certainly other issues in op support that we want to have a look at. Uh, State committee a couple of months ago uh, resolved to put a committee together to have a look at different ideas about how op support um, and operation can, can somehow be mixed together. Now, I'll be upfront with you, I, I, I have, that committee is going to have a look into that. Uh, if you're interested in being you know, part of that or, 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 or you know, providing feedback on that, get a hold of Marty Dixon. He's, look, he's heading up that committee um, where you sort of, you know, you might do a couple of shifts in op support and then a couple of shifts back at a station. That's the very, very broad you know, plan to that. But again, that will be just an idea session to see whether it can happen. So, hello, Jenna DeBono down there in comms, one of our great members, um, a stalwart of the union, stalwart down there at comms. Hello, comrade. Um, so yeah, look, uh, and um, so look, yeah, please get a hold of Marty Dixon. He's the Inner West Sub Branch Secretary. Um, and you know, he, he's doing a, a, a fair bit of work um, out there in uh, Greenacre, which is in his sub branch. And um, you know, and hopefully, you know, you guys have get some, you know, possibly some good results out of that. So, um, let me see, what other questions we got here? We got, uh, hello Demi, how's things? <laughs> Carl Sanderlands, we've already done the Carl Sanderlands joke, Demi. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to put up, the, there's, there, okay, thank you comrades. My, my, my technical team are fantastic. But uh, yes, thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you, technical team. 
Um, well, look, comrades, I, I'll, I'll, if there's no more questions coming in, I will wrap this up. Look, um, like I said, if you see down below there, Rex Threlfall Toast, it is a cracker of the day. Um, have a chat to anyone that's gone. Um, you know, it generally then moves on to the castle and then throughout the city, dinners and, uh, you know, I, I don't think I've been to bed before midnight after a Rex yet. So it is a, it is a cracker event and I, okay, I've just been told by my team that there is a question for the Royal Chambers. Um, there we go, it's gonna pop up. So from Hi Heath Whitten, hi Heath. What happened about the proposed rule change a few weeks ago about calling special general meetings? So um, I, did, I did report on that Heath, but look, I, just very quickly on those rule changes. Um, uh, the rule changes that have been put forward, hopefully will, will push, you know, I suppose decision-making down to that station level. Um, uh, certainly, I, in my, my opinion, it's more democratic. It, it, it's, a, it's a bigger organiser model. It certainly gets more people engaged um, and certainly have that access to engagement. So, and, and that's the sort of stuff that I heard and, and certainly the, you know, the people that were going to those candidates forums, that's what we heard from the membership. They, they really wanted to be able to well, you know, station, vote on station. So, you know, you should be able to vote on SGMs at station. Um, You'll be able to put things to the state committee to be, you know, considered from a station. You know, a majority of station members uh, can put things to it to, to state committee to consider, and I think that's a really good thing. Um, obviously, you can go up through your sub branch if you wish to. There's some sub branches that do that really, really well, and I don't think we should take away from that. So, but um, we will be taking that back out. Uh, I'll be taking it to the state committee next week, um, and then that'll go back out for the official 28 days notice. Uh, where members can, you know, provide feedback to officials and then, you know, adopt it in 28 days after that. Um, and look, just quickly on that, and I know I've harped on about this, if you want to hold a station meeting, get a hold of your official and say, I want a station meeting, I want a, a sub-branch meeting. Um, that's what you guys as members have got access to. Um, I'll pop along if I can, or one of the executive. So, you know, you've got Mick Nan, the, the president, Trevor Ross, uh, the uh, senior vice president and obviously Sandy Linton, anything up north, he's handling for us as the junior vice president. So um, let us know if you want to come out and chat, more than happy to. I got a good question here from Blossom, uh, Darren Leslie, carcinogen and contaminant reduction is one of the key strategies of the commissioner. Should this also be a priority? Um, is it a priority for the union? Well, obviously it always is. Um, you, know, uh, you know, I think, look, you know, the, I'm struggling with the key strategies because I'm not seeing any movement um, um, in the way of moving forward about how you actually ta tackle these key strategies. You know, you've, you've got, you know, obviously the carcinogen one, you know, I, I, uh, the la a couple of fire services joint standing committee, uh, which is the, the governing sort of uh, body, well, not the governing body, but the, the consultative body that reports to the minister. I took a motion there that says that this committee should, you know, uh, recommend that uh, presumptive legislation should be done by the government. That was knocked on the head five to one, and that's fire rescue, RFS, and, um, and the RFSA all voted that down. Um, you know, I, I look at our, our mental health unit, who do, they do a great job with what they've got, but, you know, I see no vision out of management providing more funding, uh, more resources to those areas. So again, so one of the strategies that I'm not seeing progressed, and certainly it's something I've had been talking to the, uh, to management about, and um, priority, I, I'm struggling with the word priority, I must admit. Um, is there good, some good stuff coming down the line? There's good talk of it, um, but, but to be honest, I'm not going to wait for the you know the department on this. We'll be pushing um, across a number of areas um, uh, in regards to PPC, and certainly you know we've we've got a couple of issues on the boil at the moment about the supply of uh, clean gear when your gear's, gear's dirty. You know we've 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 had um, you know reports of uh, guys re-wearing dirty gear three and four times through a 24-hour shift, and that's not acceptable. And and look, there needs to be a culture change on this, and I'm not just going to tell the management on this. Members need to be aware that you do not wear dirty gear. 
It's as simple as that. The, the union t has a very strong position on this. If it's dirty, bag, tag it, get new gear. You take yourself offline, you ring your zoner, you ring your duty commander, they get you new gear and you're offline until that point. Now, if that means if you're offline for eight hours, that's what it takes. Because the moment you put that dirty gear back on, you're contaminating yourself and you're contaminating your crew. So let's, 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 that is one point that I will make. Um, let me see, there's one here. Yeah, look, there's one here from Peter Derrick. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm on phone as well, because I've my, my, my internet's down here as well. Can an LF outside GS apply for GSA? Yeah, sorry, I, I must. It was that. A, sorry, Pete, was that answering a question someone else up there to put up? Um, I'll ask again. How does how does an LF or LSO get promoted if they're outside the GSA? They apply for LS and LSO jobs that are uh, outside the GSA. Um, have a look at the award. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's Newcastle LF jobs, so Newcastle guys go for those, and girls, sorry. Um, uh, the regional stations have uh, individual stations applying for those LF jobs, um, and same with the LSO. So if, if whoever put that question up, and I missed it, and I apologise, if you've got a specific question or, or, or um, uh, a specific instant where that's not happening, send this in an email and, and I'll get you an answer. Uh, there's one here. We've got one here from John. Hello, John. John Krychek, MFR, dead in the water. Look, by all accounts, John, uh, they're saying MFR is dead. Uh, but, you know, the, the plus, plus, plus plan talks about medical work. Um, you might have missed this at the start. Uh, we were, the State Committee are getting a uh, presentation from the department next Thursday uh, on the early access, uh, the EAD program, early access to fibrillator program. Um, and I think State Committee will have a look at that and see whether it's medical work or not. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll probably, we'll, we'll, we'll work out our tactics going on from there. But look, certainly one of the things um, uh, where I think the union and management um, have two differing views on this. Um, and, and, you know, I, I certainly, I think through the, through the election period, um, you know, th there was talk about a change of, our, of the union's position, which is, you know, the 12.5%, the, the, uh, the, 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 the agreement to a training program to deal with medical work, and then obviously the support services that go with that. There was a, there was a lot of talk from members about, you know, re revisiting that question and, and so having over a no or a yes or, or, or playing with, a, with that position. Now, like I said, management have a different view on this, uh, that where the members are at. Everything that I heard out of members was they didn't want to do it. They didn't really want to take it on. Um, there were some that said, well, look, you know, we've money and the right training. And then I think there was, there, was, there was certainly a section of that. And to be honest, there was only one or two that said, I'd like to do it for, you know, just, just give it to us, you know. So, um, look, I, I will be talking to the state committee about revisiting that question and, and seeing where the membership's at. I mean, we are six years on. Um, you know, I don't think we should ever stick our heads in the sand and say, thou shalt not pass, or that we should never, ever look at things again. Uh, I think we should take that back out and say, right, right, what do we think about it now? Do we want to do it now, or are we a no now? Um, or are we, you know, here's the rules that we've got. So, uh, again, we'll, we'll be taking that back out. Uh, but is MFR dead in the water? If you ask the department, they're saying it's dead in the, dead in the water. Uh, but then there's early access defibrillator. So we'll see, we'll see next Thursday, and, uh, and I'll hold judgment, I suppose, John. So, look, last couple of questions, and look, I apologise for the technical delay uh, that we had earlier. Um, but I will take just one or two more. Um, uh, thank you, Shannon Dixon. Great to see the FBU stepping into the 21st century. Great initiative. Thank you, comrade. Look, and if you've got any more ideas, um, you know, let me know. Um, you know, or your subway secretary, we'll throw them into the mix and see what we can come out with. Uh, so there's one here from Jason Turner. Has there been any discussion 
on what's going to happen to firefighters who don't pass the new medical exam? Um, look, very broad question there. Um, any discussion, I'm assuming at a state committee level and, and, and certainly at, a, at a, an executive level, absolutely, Jason. Uh, we have been talking about it. At the moment, uh, my understanding is that letters haven't gone out to start that process. Uh, Fire Rescue is still fine tuning, um, I think, their tender for the IOP. So I think we're still probably a little bit way off on that yet. But look, there's been heaps of discussion going forward. Um, and, you know, when and if we get to those uh, hurdles, we'll certainly, uh, we'll be certainly tackling them. So, but good question. Keep an eye on CITREP. Um, there's been, I think, 11, or, don't quote me, like there's been a lot of updates on health and fitness. Go back through those sit reps, uh, like I said, uh, get the information. Um, and look, if you've got more questions, ask your sub secretary or jump on the forum and ask there. And I will just repeat, if you're not receiving sit reps, if you're not receiving our membership cards, please, um, uh, you know, jump onto our website, uh, change your details, and we can start sending you information to keep you up to date. Um, and very good comment there right at the end. So look, Comrades, I'll wrap that up. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, uh, like I said, the Rex next Tuesday, it is a cracker of event. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's all the sorts of things that you expect when, you know, over 150 odd fireys get together and there's, you know, you know food and drink and uh, a really good venue involved. So it is a cracker of a day. Uh, grab a mate, grab, you know, uh, you know, grab your shift, get along to that. Unfortunately, Deep Platoon, um, you know, to, to Fergo and the boys are very, very sorry. It won't be on Deep Platoon next year. Uh, we'll see you there then. But look, um, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, get a hold of your sub branch secretary, get involved. And remember, you know, we are stronger as one. So thank you very much.